Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently we are in the second module of our deep learning course and in this second module we are discussing about mathematics for deep learning. The previous video that we had was about matrix and how matrix kind of helps in deep learning and what are all the applications of this. And in this video let's understand the main matrix operations that we have and how these matrix operations come together in deep learning. So where exactly these uh, matrix operations are used. So this is the topics that we will be discussing in today's video and let's get started. So these are the three operations that we will be discussing today. So first we have matrix addition and subtraction which is pretty much similar to each other. So first is that one. So we will understand what is matrix addition and what is matrix subtraction. Understand this with an example. Then we will uh, also discuss about what is the application of this uh, arithmetic operation of addition and subtraction specifically matrix addition and subtraction in deep learning. The next aspect is matrix multiplication how this is exactly used in neural networks and deep learning and finally which is a simple operation that is transpose so how do you find a transpose of a matrix and, and how that kind of uh, involves in the operations of deep learning and neural networks so this is the things that we will be discussing today so we will first understand the definition or the concept of these operations then understand it further with an example and finally we will uh, understand like where it's exactly used so that will be the pattern for this particular video so first is about matrix addition and subtraction this is kind of the definition for this so this is actually a simple operation when it comes to a matrix so matrix addition and subtraction or element wise operation so this is important so these are element wise operations where each element of one matrix is added or subtracted from the corresponding element in another matrix these operations require the matrix to have the same dimension so this is like a very important aspect so let me maybe highlight this so let's say that when you are trying to add or subtract two matrices they should be of the same dimensions dimensions in the sense they should have the same number of rows and the same number of columns and then uh, the other one is these are element wise operations okay so these are the important aspects and we just like add or subtract it with the corresponding aspect so that's about it so let's understand this with an example so let's say that we have two matrices a and b of the same dimension m into n so let's say m is the number of rows and n is, n is the number of columns so in this case m is equal to 2 and n is, is also is equal to 2 because these two are two cross two matrix that means this these matrices have two rows and two columns and this first element is represented by a11 that means it is in first row and first column this is a12 that means it's in first row but in second column so that's how you can read this so if you take this particular value of a22 so that means it's in second row second column so these are like basic stuff right so I probably you already know this and then we have this let's say b matrix and there can be some number so this is just representation of a11 a12 and so on there can be any number let's say this contains values like 10 13 25 30 and this contains like four other numbers so let's say that we want to add these two matrices a and b and subtract these two matrices and this is how this we would do as this is an element wise operation we would add these two numbers so I, I can highlight this as well so you can uh, kind of take some values and try this out as well so we basically add these two values uh, a11 and b11 and we would add these values a12 and b12 so that's what we have over here so we have a11 and b11 which is this first corresponding values and a12 and b12 similarly we do that for this a21 plus b21 a22 plus b22 so you just like do a element wise addition and then for subtraction we just like do a element wise subtraction which is similar to this so this is how you can do a matrix addition and subtraction and when it comes to deep learning matrix addition and subtraction are often used during weight updates in gradient descent for example the new weight matrix is computed by subtracting the product of the learning rate and gradient from the old weights so let's try to kind of understand this so uh, we are talking about updating weights and gradient descent right so you know that in gradient descent what we basically try to do is uh, try to find the optimum weights and biases let's say and when we say optimum weights and biases that means when you use those weight values and bias value you are going to get a more accurate model accurate neural network right and for that purpose we constantly update the weight value and bias value so that's what kind of that's the place where we use this addition and subtraction it's it's not like you only do addition and subtraction so there is also a detailed level of differential calculus and all those stuff involved but 
this addition and subtraction are also kind of a part of that so that's how we can understand this so that weight matrix and other things are kind of involved here so example is that the new weight matrix is computed by subtracting the product of the learning rate and gradient from the old weights so gradient is like how much your loss function changes when your weight or bias changes so once you have that you do the product of the learning rate and learning rate is like how much change you're going to infuse to that so you multiply that learning rate and gradient and then you would subtract that with the new uh, subtract that with the old weight matrix and you would get a new weight matrix so this is an example and even this is okay if, if you are not clearly understanding or getting the part of this gradient descent and stuff if you have watched my machine learning courses and, and other videos on gradient descent you might get an idea but if you are not getting an idea that's completely fine because we will discuss about this gradient descent and other details in detail as well the purpose of this video is for you just to understand these operations in detail right so that's the main aspect so just understand how this operation works the basic operation of matrix addition subtraction and multiplication works and once you have that clarity right so later when we discuss these aspects of gradient descent and weight updation and so on you won't face any difficulties on understanding how the matrix and how the other operations work so that's about it so i just wanted to give you a teaser kind of a thing of where it's used but the main aspect or the main takeaway should be for you to understand these operations okay so this is all about matrix addition and subtraction where it is all about element wise and the condition is that both matrices should have the same dimension and it's mainly used in the weight updation process so that's about matrix addition and subtraction now let's discuss about matrix multiplication and this is what matrix multiplication is and this is kind of slightly complex uh, than your matrix addition and subtraction because this is not straightforward element wise and you probably would have learned this in your 12th grade so it's kind of simple as well in matrix multiplication the number of columns in the first matrix must equal the number of rows in the second matrix the product of two matrices a and b is a new matrix c where each element c i j is calculated as the dot product of the ith row of a and the jth column of b so this can be a bit tricky to understand but with example it makes more sense so let's let's try to do that so the first thing is the condition so what's the condition that lets you uh, to multiply two matrix so for that let's say you have two matrix a and b so the number of columns in the first matrix must equal the number of rows in the second matrix so this is how we can write this so let's say that a is of 2 into 3 that means uh, the a matrix has two rows and three columns and now let's say we have another matrix b matrix that is of three rows and let's say four columns or something like this now we have to check the condition if what's given here the number of columns in the first matrix must equal to the number of rows in the second matrix so that means this value 3 should match with this value so if these two values are same then you can do matrix multiplication so this is the criteria for this whereas in the case of addition and subtraction all you need is same number of rows and same number of columns but here the number of columns in first matrix should be equal to the number of rows in the second matrix so that's when that condition is satisfied you can multiply uh, two matrices and this two and this four this can be any number so this is kind of not important only these two numbers are important for that condition to be satisfied and now let's say that we have these two matrix this is like two into two and this is also two into two so this values are going to be equal even this two values are going to be equal but that's kind of not important here at all so only the the three year and this three year is important in this case all all the values are two so it, it's going to satisfy that condition so let's say that we have a and b as the two matrices just given in this example and we want to find c which is the product of the two matrices a and b so how you would do do this is let me draw this as well so you take this first row and multiply it with this first column and again you take this first row and multiply with the second column maybe let's consider the first one so you have this 1 and 2 and take this 5 and 7 we do a multiplication and summation and that would kind of come here okay so we have 1 and 2 so 1 is the first element here right so and, and multiply this 1 with 5 and multiply this 2 with 7 maybe i'll draw a uh, arrow here so this 1 is multiplied with this 5 and 2 is multiplied with this 7 and you just add that and that would be your first element or first value here okay so 1 into 5 plus 2 into 7 and for the second value right so that should be 
maybe I'll write or draw this in a different color. So this uh, we have to consider this 1 and 2 now and 6 and 8. Okay, so for this we have to multiply this 1 and 6 and this 2 and 8 and add this. So this is what we do, right? And the next one is again consider 3 and 4, 5 and 7, 3 and 4, 6 and 8. So multiply those corresponding values and add it and you would get your matrix. I'll probably just erase this so that it's kind of clear. Okay, so that's how you can do this. Let me turn off the pen. Okay, so we have A and B and first we multiply 1 and 5 and add it to 2 and 7 and then multiply 1 and 6 add it with 2 and 8 and, and put it here and finally this is the result that you would get and this is how you can do this matrix multiplication as well. So this can be a bit tricky as I said so please just you can try on your note just writing it down and, and calculating it for yourself and you can verify for maybe a larger matrix 3 into 4 and 4 into 3 matrix or something so that you get that clear idea. So now you can go through this definition. First is the number of columns in the first matrix must equal the, to equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. So this probably is clear for you. And the second part is the product of two matrices A and B is a new matrix C which is something that we have here where each element C i j. So this can be mentioned as C i j this value 19. So 19 would take the address of C 11, 22 would take the address of C 12 and so on. Where this element C i j is calculated as the dot product of i row of a and j column of B. So this is basically what we have done here. So we first consider this first row and this first column, right? So that's basically uh, what is given here. So I hope that this is clear now. So this is about the operation and understanding about the application in an I level, we, we can do this. So matrix multiplication is used in neural networks forward propagation. So in a neural network learning, there are two phases, right? So one is your forward propagation and there is another thing called as backward propagation. And during this process, the weights change as well. So this matrix multiplication is used in that part of forward propagation in neural network. And if we want to understand this, like exactly where it's used, it's in a fully connected layer. If you consider a fully connected layer where uh, a particular layer is connected to all the neurons in the previous layer. So that's what we call as a fully connected layer. The input vector matrix is multiplied by the weight matrix to produce the output. So let's say that you have some input values. So you have an image and you would flatten that image, get all the pixel values and you pass that to a set of neurons. And with this neurons, we multiply it with weight values, right? So you each neuron would have a weight value. And now what you're doing is multiplying the input matrix with that weight, weight matrix. And this is where basically the matrix multiplication happens, right? And later you probably would add a bias and so on, but that's not important for us. So that's the place where matrix multiplication is used. Again, there are other places as well. This is like giving an eye level view of where it's critically used. So that's where. So in the, you can just remember this as in the matrix multiplication is used in forward propagation of uh, neural network in the training process where the input vector, input values are multiplied with the weight values where both are matrices and we do this matrix multiplication. So that's about it. So the next operation that we are going to discuss is matrix transpose where this is like a very simple process. The transpose of a matrix is an operation that flips the matrix over its diagonal turning rows into columns and vice versa. So it's basically we are going to convert the rows into columns and columns into rows and that's what we mean by saying flip the matrix over its diagonal where your rows would now become columns and your columns would become your rows. Say if you consider this example of A12, A12, A21, A22. So when you do the transpose, A12 will stay here, but this will come here because uh, let me draw this as well. So, so we have this row, right? This row in the transpose matrix will become this column. Okay, let me redraw this. So we have this particular row. So this row is going to be turned into a column. So this first row has now become your first column in your transpose. You can see the values A11, A11 and here we have A11 and A12. So here A12 here as well A12. And in the next case, the second row A21 and A22. So this row, second row has been converted to your second column. So this is what we do in transpose, which is like a pretty simple uh, operation. 
to say. So if matrix A is of size m into n, the transpose AT will be of size n into m and this would make sense as we are just converting or flipping rows into columns and columns into rows, the size would also uh, flip or basically the shape of the matrix would flip from m into n into n into m. So that's about it where in the first case m is your number of rows and n is your number of columns and this would just like turn okay and where this is used is the transpose operation is often used in back propagation as i said in the previous slide so we have forward propagation and in the backward propagation and particularly in gradient calculation so this is also the place where the gradient uh, descent works in order to change the weights and so on and then we have a part called as gradients right so for example when computing the gradient of the loss function with respect to the weights the transpose of input matrices is used so gradients is, is, is it's basically like we do a differential of <clears throat> or we basically differentiate the loss function with respect to weight and this is what this gives you is how much your loss function is going to change when you change a weight and the purpose of doing this is we constantly have to reduce the loss function because when you reduce the loss function in your model that's going to increase its its accuracy right so each step we try to change uh, change this weights based on the minimization of your loss function so this is what gradient is so it's basically the differential of loss function with respect to your uh, weights okay and this is the place where we do this transpose of the input matrix and, and this is where it's 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 kind of used okay so these are some of the applications of this operations and i hope that this is clear and even if the application is part is not clear that's okay because this is intended to intended to kind of for us to understand in the later part of the course where we discuss in detail about how the data flows when a neural network trains and, and what are all the different process like gradient descent, back, back propagation, all these happens when we discuss this in detail. So this is okay, just, just understand that this operation is used in this place and that operation is used in like that particular place. So that's all you need to know and the other very important takeaway should be for you to understand these basic operations. So these are not complex at all, probably you have already studied in this in the school. So I just wanted to give you a refresher on all these operations which are like critical for us to understand. So first is like a simple addition and subtraction where we would have this element wise uh, addition and subtraction and so on and then multiplication is a bit complex where you consider this rows and columns do those calculations and so on and finally we have this transpose thing okay. So I hope everyone is clear uh, about the concepts that we have discussed today. So that is all from my side in this video and I will see you in the next upload. Thanks for watching.